like a really bad accident, bro. I had like really like ambulance and fly to check the Wow. Yeah. Is he on now? Yeah, I'm on. Okay. What are you doing? Driving back to work. It was uh, I was in traffic. It was a really bad accident. Fire department, uh, ambulance, and everything. You had a bad accident. No, not me. No, there was a there was a bad accident that I, and I was stuck in the uh, traffic on the highway. I'm still on. Uh, I see. Yeah. Okay. That's better. Yeah. Somebody else's problem, eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But um, the, the the car there was like you could see all the airbags. Oh wow. Yeah. You go in a rush to get home, you know. So, yeah. It's the New York. The New York attitude is I have to get to where I'm going now. Yeah. yeah. You seem to have a similar problem in California. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, those major business areas are up there. So uh, Jenny told me yesterday something uh, that happened, something that was going on with you and uh, you wanted to, uh, I forgot what it was exactly, that you, oh, so, um, I think it was uh, a message, a uh, message from creation or something like that. I'm having a lot of trouble figuring out what you're saying. Oh. I heard the part about Jennifer said, but then I <laughs> Oh, you, you hear me now? I hear you, but I don't always get what you're saying. Oh, maybe I should uh, enunciate better. <laughs> there are words missing in between. I don't know what's doing it. Oh, what what I said was that um, Jenny mentioned something about um, you were getting messages or something from creation yeah. about... Yeah, because um, I, I felt like something similar, something similar today. I, I, today, yesterday, just over the last couple of days. I've been, the, I've been, they, uh, the discussions that I've been having with the cell uh-huh. is, is that there are a lot of people waiting once they leave life on earth in in a, a waiting mode before they can move on to paradise if you will use that word uh, they don't use those words but uh it's like purgatory and paradise are both the same except in paradise, you get to deal directly with creation, whereas before paradise, you uh, deal with agents like the self. And in order for people to move faster, the cell has suggested that we could help that cause by on the farm here starting a project called Paradise Gardens and that would be uh, what we have been talking about before is in the field where we had uh, uh, you guys uh, spend night time there that we would build a vertical garden. 
so that on the ground it would be uh, an 80 foot diameter then 10 feet up a 40 foot diameter 10 feet above that a 20 foot diameter and uh, beside it a cat clinic skeletal cat clinic for the cats that will be uh, sent to join the march to paradise and if if I can arrange that by having donations from people uh, up front, it would speed up everything that comes afterwards in in the context of what they want to do on the farm. This is peanuts little project, but only to show that there are some people who care about those who lived and died but are stuck in a place where they're not able to move forward to paradise type of thing. And I I use those words because that's the only way I can explain what their meanings are, but they have different words for it for places where you wait and places where you go ahead and uh, like pineal court where you get tried, uh, that kind of stuff. So a lot of uh, things that, that the cell is talking about works along with what they're planning for the site here, but it it is more a small version of activity that they would like to see going. And there's a few people that I know whose relatives have died in the last few years, some last few months, and they could be helpful uh, in making things happen. And uh, that's basically what I've been involved in. I don't know if you can understand it. It's a little complex for uh, beginners, but you guys are not as beginners as most. So you, you want to build some kind of structure? Build a garden. garden. A garden. I guess the garden is kind of like a, is it symbolic garden? Very much like uh, gardens used to be in the Middle East uh, prior to the year 1000 B.C. It was done by whatever name they gave to the leaders and it had a connection to the underground and rose above ground and was surrounded by a fence. Mm. How much uh, is uh, needed for that project? I have no idea until I start, the first uh, thing that has to be done is a well dug in the front field. So whatever they they would charge to build, to dig a well and put a pump, manual pump on top as the first step is is what I'm looking at. And then once that's in place, a fence to contain cats is another aspect because all the cats that we are now giving a home to and birthing and everything, once they get to be adult cats, they go off into the bush and become feral. And what the cell needs is 100 cats so in order to make sure there's 
a hundred that stay at home is going to put up a fence. And then it's a matter of bringing in someone who's laying concrete that will build the different levels one at a time. Uh, And on top of it, uh, put solar panels, because everything in the project on this farm uh, must be uh, done through solar power rather than hydro. They are of the opinions that the people who now control hydro in Ontario are criminals. And they don't want anything that they're going to be doing in the future to be powered by hydroelectricity, but rather by solar panels so that it's all managed from within the site. But the first thing first, that well, I'm not sure uh, uh, what type of uh, profession that uh, specialize in that. I'm not, I got, I, I have to, I got to do some research, some homework. But I'm having gotta, trouble understanding you. I said first thing first. I I want to. I ha- I need to know what uh, profession is that that. Dig holes in ground and build wells. Because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I don't know who would do that. And then from well, there, huh? what what is required is somebody who digs wells first of all to come to the site and give an estimate of a cost depending on where they find water. You know, if if there is running water uh, 25 feet below ground or 50 feet below ground or 100 feet below ground, that will determine how much that part costs. Until that happens, I have no idea. Is it a mason that does that? Do masons do that? Big, uh... Well, there are specialists in, if you look up uh, digger, diggers of wells, if you look that up, you'll yeah. probably find a definition. I don't know where they come in the scale of uh, things to do, but they're, they don't really build anything. They They dig a hole with a drill and stick mm-hmm. a pipe down and a gadget somewhere below ground so that when you're not pumping, the water is not at the surface in a place where it might freeze. It drops to about 15 feet below ground. And then when you come, you you pump on a handle, and the water comes up from there into whatever you want to put it in. And it has to be done in a way, in a manner in which at one stage of the game, later on, that you can replace the hand pump with a powered pump based on solar energy. Hmm. And, yeah. and eventually the idea is the water will rise above ground and up to the top story, and the top story has a 20-foot diameter, and you grow things there that are closest to the sunlight. And when the water has uh, drained its way through that top one, it goes into a gutter that brings it down to the second level from the top, which is 40 feet diameter. And when it does that, it then drops down to the ground level, which is 80 feet in diameter. And that's how you do your irrigation of the entire garden. And you can grow 
in a small space of 80 feet what you would normally need hundreds of feet if they were uh, flat lateral on the ground because of how you can control everything with light and with water. Well, I, I'm, 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 I'm not too familiar. I've seen, like, businesses that have, they're promoting that a lot, solar panels. And from, from what I know, the solar panels are, like, thousands of dollars. But but that that would be for a house, cause I guess, on the roof of a house. It covers a lot yeah. more space. But if it's for this, it's, it's not a solar panel you need for that uh, the, the idea is that you move forward with mm-hmm. what you have today and only add more and more panels when the need arises based on what your level of activity is on the ground. Yeah. Do you know how deep your well is right now that you have on there? The the well we had on the house was 125 feet. The well that used to be here uh, before that well was dug was 15 feet, and it ran out of water every spring. Uh, I'm looking up some averages, and they're saying between 15 to 30 dollars per foot in depth. Of depth. Okay. And if it's difficult terrain, fifty dollars. But you know, average cost anywhere between five thousand. Terrain here wouldn't be a problem because they're yeah. right off the road. Eh? Yeah, I'm sure it's just a flat. Yeah, that's nothing. But um, so they're saying average cost can be like fifty five hundred with with a depth of one hundred and fifty feet. So yeah, looking at so, but they said most projects range between fifteen hundred and that. So, fifteen to thirty oh. feet, depending on how easy. I've uh, I've prepared a package that I'm sending to people I know in Montreal, and they should get it in the mail next week. And if if there's a reaction uh, and and they start helping then as funds come in, I'll determine what the next step is. But I I don't want to have people come in to do estimates unless I at least know I can afford to pay what they're selling. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. Now, the, the whole interesting thing in all of this, uh, is that they have uh, explained to me how when a person dies, there is a division. If you if you imagine a um, a, a, a dual person, a person has two lines that are twisted as a twisted pair together in their genome, when they die, that separates. One goes towards either staying in the ground or be used by genetic engineers to uh, change the personality of eggs they're going to genetically engineer and insert in women who will then continue their life on the planet. The other uh, uh, part of the, the genetic division here is what we have in the past known as ghosts. And ghosts are people who have died and their uh, uh, electromagnetism or whatever you want to call it 
continues down a different path towards paradise. But before they leave, they have some repair jobs they need to do, and the cell is like that. They uh, investigate and, and bring information forward so that changes can occur in the life they live to make mm-hmm. it better for people in the future than what it was in the past. And then they and uh, once they're finished with that, they end up in a place that, from my religious background, I would describe as purgatory, or as they call it, purgatory, cleanse the soul, if you will. And while they're cleansing the soul, they can be there for. 10 minutes, or they can be there for a thousand years. But at the point at which people like the cell advance their cause with the help of people who are still alive, then that means that the people who are waiting can move forward. Now, the way that it was explained to me is think about there has been to date approximately 7 billion, 500 million people uh, born and died. There are seven and a half billion people alive today. So about half have come and gone. The other half remains here on the planet now. The people here can help the people there move to paradise by doing certain projects that demonstrates they are interested and care about the people who live and die. The less they help, the slower their relatives move forward. The more they help, the faster their related people, the people they knew in their circle, not necessarily family, but extended family of people they work with or or new, they can move forward faster. Normally, that would be explained to a person once the person dies. Because of what they want to do on this farm, they are sharing that information with me at this stage so that I can share it with others and see if there's uh, a a good response of people who care because their turn will come too one day. (laughs) And they will hope that somebody is doing something to move them along at time in the future. Uh, So that's basically to make a very long story that has taken weeks to explain to me in 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 our an hour with you guys <laughs> in other words, you don't die completely ever because there's a part of you that is ghost-like and a part of you that can be either used again in a genetic pool type of thing. And and there's the third group where nobody gives a damn about and goes into the ground, that's it. If you call 
being ignored after you die by a word we use in English, you would call that hell. If you would call the people who are reused and come back and continue on this planet over and over again through a genetic engineering program, you would call that heaven. And if you call the ghost reaching paradise, you would call that the best damn place you could end up in. So it's a matter of what people care about. Do they want to just die and stay in the ground? Do they want to come back genetically engineered? Or do they want to be in a place that everybody says they want to be but do nothing to get there? That's an easy choice. (laughs) (laughs) If it's so easy, why is not it? How come you don't see more people doing that? Well, it's more, it sounds like it's the choices you're making now that kind of determine that factor. Yeah. Think about it. And see if you can come up with any answers on, on health or not. I'm starting by thinking about the all. You're starting what? I'm starting the information movement by sending a package to Montreal that explains to people who've lost a relative, a wife or husband or whatever that I know of, and see how they respond. Do they um, care? to do something financially. And I've sent them a bank account number that they can go to anywhere in Canada, Bank of Nova Scotia, and make a deposit. Whether the deposit is two bucks or 2,000 or 2 million, is up to them. Okay. I, I don't know. Uh, I guess I, I could just come to, to, to you, I guess. I guess I'll just talk to you on the phone or something. Uh, so do you want to wait for your response before maybe we put it up somewhere? Well, yeah, you can just think about it and see if if uh, if it makes any sense to you guys or not. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm not. I'm not usually a guy that asks for anything. And and this to me seems like a way for people to help others now and by helping others now help themselves in the future. But I got to wait to see what kind of responses I get. So with the um, garden, does that have to wait? Like, does the well have to be first because you need the water for the plants and stuff like that? or? Yeah, I'm. Well, you know, if I had thing, right? if I had money in the bank that I know would cover the cost of the well, I'd have the well done. But I don't want to have the well done, and to have no way of paying for it. That's the first step. Yeah, that's the uh, water is water is the mode of transmission in everything the cell does. 
And therefore, it always is the first step. So, yeah, that's how I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it as like a step-by-step thing. So this is, the first step is the most important right now. Yeah. Uh, so. so that's what I, I'll focus on. And, I, you know, I'll, I'll help with that. I'll definitely do that. Whatever... Uh, evolves from this we will know over time so so I'm leaving you with a basic mindset that I have for future activity and I can't give you a final until I know how people have responded. Yeah. And that includes you guys, of course. Too. Yeah. You respond in in whatever way you see fit. What I'm asking of the people in Montreal, that because I used to live there for 10 years in Montreal, um, is... Anybody there willing to provide for their deceased relatives? And if they are, they simply can go to the bank and make a deposit. And and because of the banking structure in Canada, which is different from the U.S., all the banks, there there are, you know, six major bank companies. They have banks all across the country. And so we picked one of them, Bank of Nova Scotia, because that's the one that I had the most contact with Tom Byberg, for example, because he and I, when we first moved into this area from out west, opened an account at at the Bank of Nova Scotia because it was across the street from where Tom and I were living in Kempville. And but I changed that over time as I moved to the farm here and as I got married with uh, Jennifer. um, And now most of the mortgage and stuff like that is being done by one bank. Jennifer's bank account was another bank, Royal Bank. Um, And... and, um, my pension plan comes in through another bank. And the whole idea was that the cell wanted to find out which bank eventually they would arrive at with millions of dollars. Which bank gave me the better service over the years and uh, that will be decided at a later date. So what I'm doing is I'm trying not to confuse my mortgage or or my pension in all of this. I'm using the Bank of Nova Scotia, who have branches all across Canada, uh, because that's the one that I use the least for the last. 18 years since I've been on the farm. And since I had an account there with no money in it for 15 years, it's not going to confuse anything else that I'm doing. Anyways, think about it. I got to go feed some animals and cats before 
I drop off to sleep. Okay, Glenn. That, thank you for calling, and and think up any questions you might have now that you can ask me another time. Uh, are you going to be available possibly tomorrow? Uh, as long as it's around this time. How is it last seven? Okay. Yeah, six, seven thirty, seven o'clock. Yeah, I'm I'm busy till about six thirty, and then I close up before the sun goes down around eight, eight thirty. So. Okay. So if All you right. want to ask me anything tomorrow, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Have a good evening. You too. You too. Bye for now. Okay.